man. I'm always for games. All right, guys, starting uh, down here at the bottom right side of the map, representing complexity, played a much better game uh, in game number two. It is Taiga. Did a really nice job right there in terms of controlling his opponent, putting on a lot of pressure there in the very early stages as well. I was honestly very surprised that he was able to bounce back so nicely after his opponent basically ripped his whole entire economy apart. But due to the fact that he traded economy for army value, he had a much higher army value and from there really Bones couldn't continue. And I was really surprised because Bones continued uh, to not make a third base and went for a follow-up two base all in. With just more, with the same, with basically the same composition, and you can't, you can kind of do that, but you'd have to have a lot more damage done. Uh, the second time around, bio forces a lot more marauders, a lot more units that could soak up and withstand a, a, a Protoss force like Bones had. So, we'll see though. In game number three, man, it all comes down to this: winner goes on, loser goes home. Starting over here on the left side of the map in the green, we have the Protoss player from Seed. It is Bones. AKA Miles. You guys can of course follow these players at Seed Bones and as well at Complexity at C O L underscore Taiga. If you guys are interested, by the way. I think I'm gonna start doing that more to keep track of players' Twitters, man. I love it, because yesterday when we were casting the global qualifier for Red Bull, I was just kinda sitting there and a couple and a few of the Korean players didn't have Twitter. I'm like, man, why don't you have Twitter? Somebody like Hush, man. Hush and trust. I'm like, why don't you guys have Twitters, man? Get them. Like people would love to follow and kind of see what you guys are doing with your life, what you guys tweet out, how your you know pro gamer careers are. It's kind of like our version of like TMZ almost in a sense. I consider it pretty cool. I think everybody everybody should have a Twitter, man. It's like it's like it's like the Facebook but better because you're limited to 140 characters. Like you can still voice your opinion, you know. You can still voice your opinion, but it's a lot easier of an outlet for, you know, the masses to reach as well, especially, you know, if you're trying to hit a fan base. Not everybody exactly has a Facebook, or not everybody wants to use a Facebook. Twitter, it's a lot more easier, it's a lot more accessible, a lot easier to stay mobile with as well. Tiger going to be opening a fairly similar to the past two games. Uh, Reaper expand into that reactor on the barracks and then the factory drop as well. Mothership Corps it comes out. Did that Reaper actually get a kill right there? Yeah, it's got one probe. It looks like a nice job. Meanwhile, Bones getting his natural up as well. And these these guys are willing to just play it out about as standard as it comes. I I'm telling you, man, this is the third game in a row. Same opener. Just same opener, and so if 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 we had to be the Nostradamus, because we you know as casters we have to have like some Nostradamus moments. We have to, we have to predict, we have to analyze, we have to you know talk like we kn actually assume and know the game. <laughs> what what am I Marine Harass? I want to say from Taiga. I would put money on it. What am I coming out? Yep, Marines. What am I? And then the Medivac follow up as well. So. Now, this does work, because Bones, again, most likely if I assume Bones, he'll drop a Robo very soon. And, you know, followed up with three gates. Bam, man. Look at me, look at me, man. I'm on point today. Look at me. On point today. Talk about who knows the StarCraft. <laughs> talk about, talk about who's, who's been watching the same game to already twice in a row. Now the one of mine uh, initially until the medevacs come out for the drop is going to be very useful because you know if something like an oracle comes on through he's going to be able to if or phoenixes even say they come through they fly over they eat a one of mine shot they're dead so getting the bunker up on the high ground in case there's any early gateway pressure aside of the, that initial reaper scout he hasn't really found himself uh, too much more information though bones again he's going to try to do what he usually does uh, the two gates meanwhile on bones i mean sorry but a uh, taiga that was bones on the other side of the map waiting for us two gates to finish up we should be starting to see there we go the observers underway so very very similar openers from both players we'll, we'll see how this plays out and and you know after you watch these type of games that are very similar from game 1 to game 3 it really even though, you know, for the viewer it might not be as, say, entertaining or as awesome, you know, something a little bit more chaotic and a little bit more gimmicky or uh, something more cheeky of a playstyle. 
but you do find out who the better player is, I want to say just due to the fact of how they react and how they play out or how they change up their movement with that same build over and over again. Now the Mothership Corp doesn't have enough to drop two Photon Overcharges just yet. He has one. Which one will it choose? It goes for the main first. The mine will attempt a burrow. Now check this out. Pylon actually destroyed right before that second observer comes out. There is a second widow mine as well. Now he could work his way up into the natural for now. He gets a couple seconds that he could work with because look at that. The photon overcharge is not going to be available once again for another 10 seconds. This is a similar scenario to last game. I'm surprised Taiga hasn't been curious enough to push up here and just double check and just see. But at the same time, if he does push up with the Widow Mine, he will lose it almost right away if any unit is able to, you know, tickle it down. Look at that, it's just, yeah, it's 10 HP, so even a Stalker shot will be able to kill this thing. So Marine Forces are trying to come up, Stalkers are trying to micro in between them, trying to focus down the medevac along the way. Photon Overcharge energy is uh, plentiful, and oh, so it gets a pick off on the Sentry. Might also get a Stalker here, no. DPS between the stalkers of the mother, uh, the photon overcharge a little bit too much. Hallucinated Phoenix flying over Taiga's base, double checking and spotting that. Well, indeed, in fact, it is the same game that hit we we've been watching. <laughs> does the uh, Taiga does the classic lift off, uh, bring it back down, lift off up again. Th th those are moments I kind of like want to break my keyboard a little bit, where like I lift up the factory and then I drop it down again, and then I, and then the worst the worst thing about it is I, I thought because I, I have everything I usually have everything hotkeyed, I, I stream on through, I right click like the rally command over here, and instead of medevacs I'm producing wood on mines, and instead of any medevac production I have a starport floating over to my natural like <laughs> I look over there's a starport over by my natural I'm like what the hell is that thing doing there god damn it get out of there now Bones uh, on the other side of the map right now is going to be taking his third base as we see right now we'll be pretty aware if anything does come to him on the south side has an observer pretty in a pretty good position I would actually encourage him maybe to even come over a little bit more left, but generally good position. On the right side he's got an observer as well to spot anything that might come to his third base and check that out. Oh ho ho ho! Sound the alarms! Sound the alarms! Does he have enough forces? Oh, he's got two Colossus. Yeah, no, he's got enough. No! You left the Marauder! That Kerrigan Marauder right there. Damn you, Taiga. Damn you! Damn, damn you, Manx! Damn you, Taiga. Both players, though, this time around do seem to be a little bit more favored towards the macro end of the game, but you can see that their tech is a little bit more developed. They're getting they're getting they're getting to where they were. They're getting at the twelve they're getting to where they're at at the twelve minute mark where they were about at the fourteen fifty mark minute mark last game. So Taiga this time around in full force uh, with his double drops in dual prong attacks. Meanwhile he's gonna run over here towards this base. We'll be able to snipe a pylon out and pull back. The blink stalkers. Wow! Between the two medevacs, 1 HP, 35 HP. Both got away. I would just hide. I would just hide. I would not even think about bringing them out ever again. Just hide right now. He's gonna bring them out. <laughs> Boy, copy. He gets it. He doesn't get the second one. I almost got the second one as well. I told you, don't bring him out. Just leave him be. Leave him be. Wait till you know your opponent's just distracted, or you know, make him come inside the main base and bring him out. Because you you got you think about it. Like, what, what if you lost that second medevac? That's a pretty significant chunk of supply. You're losing two medevacs. You're losing a, a chunk of your bio force. Like that bio, like that double medevac bio force was a a third of what this is right now. So. It would have been pretty big to lose. Run by coming in with Zealots over here at the third base. We'll force workers to pull off a uh, temper. Rarely might lose a couple. Loses another SCV, man. Take a look at the uh, total loss count right now. Two probes for Bones, three Zealots, and two Sentries. Compared to two Mines, six SCVs, Reaper, two Medivacs, three Marauders, and of course, 15 Marines. You can see a little bit more. Actually, significantly more, but... 
Doesn't mean that Tiger's really behind, it doesn't mean that Tiger's in a bad position. He's picking out pylons on the bottom right side of the map, so preventing any proxies, uh, taking away a little bit of scouting. He's got his two attack almost finished up, two armor underway, plus one mech. Bones, plus two, plus two, charge, about finished up. Now for Bones, I like his scenario because he's already ha he already has five Colossus, so a sixth one coming out. Very balanced AoE composition, he's gonna have the tanking ability of Archons. He's gonna have charge finished up, and if he wants, if he wants, he could get Storm. Wouldn't be too bad of an idea. He could get Storm, he's warping in Templars left and right, but due to the fact that he's forming these Archons very heavily right now, I imagine he's gonna go for attack very soon. Because when you, when you warp in the Templars and you're trying to get Storm, you're usually waiting for them to get, get energy, so you might, I don't know, it comes off as a little bit more of a passive position. Now continue to work over here to try to find any additional proxies, finds a probe, knocks out the pylons, even forces the cancel on that last one, but here comes the army, six colossus, we got some archons, we have stalkers, some charge odds bobbling around, and this is the thing as well, he's leading with the stalkers because uh, that's a unit that you can lead and then blink out of the way, you could take that initial shot and then blink them out of the way, or blink them forward. And oh, 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 quadruple medevac drop, uh, caught, wrong place, wrong time. He needs to actually unload all the units. He needs to unload them. He needs to hurry. He hasn't unloaded the units. Oh, oh man. Talk about a scary moment right there for Taiga. And now Colossus number 7 joins the battle. This is a lot of AoE. And there is not... There, there's a Viking count that's going to be able to fight with this, but not going to be able to take them out quickly. I will say that. Well, here we go. They're going to fight it. Ground Army already starting to get a little bit shredded. Vikings forced to come back. Archons actually flanking from the left side, forcing this whole entire force to come back. And with the Archons and the Vikings, uh, with the Archons, sorry, and the Stalkers under the Vikings, the rest of the forces get ripped apart. Nothing really to deter against the Colossus and Bones Band with a, such a strong 2 2 push, man. Of course, over here at the top right side of the map, a little bit of a drop at the third base, but charge lots are getting warped in. They're going to be able to probably kill off a couple of units and then work their way in a defensive position. Meanwhile, over here, the rest of the forces pushing on in. Everything's trying to fight it out. Taiga dropping down deeply in supply. And uh, I think this is, yeah, what the double. Uh, the, you, could, you, could look, you could look at the value right now. There is double the re econ, double the resources lost for uh, Taiga compared to Bones. Just way too much might, way too much uh, AOE, way too much strength for Bones, and he moves on with the series uh, lead of 2-1.